3 GT for the win. Yeah, GT definitely stands for great times. Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. Today we're at EAG Super Secret Warehouse number one and we're with a very, very special car. It is something that, well, our market never saw. It is something just 356 were built for the world. It was a homologation exercise for the brand and it is a 1995 E36 M3 GT. All were built in British Racing Green, which I have to say, it is one of the most glorious colors, one of the most dynamic colors I've seen. Uh, and I wanted to bring this to you outside here briefly while the sun's going down, just to give you some of that color temperature, because it is a very, very interesting and dynamic color that does change quite heavily with the uh, sensitivity and the brightness of the light, the quality of the light as well. Uh, it is a car that took quite a long time for EAG to acquire and procure and, and wait for because it did have to be 25 years and it was pretty much 25 years in a week when we brought this car in this past summer. I think it was one of the very first, if not the very first, legal importations of the uh, uh, GT platform into our country. And uh, well, um, we are looking for more. Uh, this car did not last very long. It never even made it to the website. Uh, it was frankly a flash on one of the YouTube videos and somebody just had to have it. Even though we didn't really plan on selling it, I wanted to experience the car a little more than we did, but I did get some very great drives in and I hope to share some of those with you at a point here in the future. Uh, but if you have a great uh, M3 GT, or even thinking about uh, selling the car here in the near future, let's, uh, let's start those conversations, let's build that relationship, and let's keep that car on the right enthusiast path. We uh, make it very easy, uh, regardless of where the car is at. Uh, we just bought another Sport Evo uh, from Down Under, of all places, and another from Canada, uh, another uh, from a repeat client, and then um, another one from, uh, well, uh, I don't quite remember. It's been, it's been a busy, busy couple weeks. Um, uh, oh, oh, yeah, uh, Germany. So uh, if you're interested in any of these homologation cars do reach out to us or have one to sell uh, we'd love to have those conversations so uh, let's take a lap around this uh, British Racing Green E36 let's uh, uh, compare it to some of these lightweights which will be another video that's coming very very soon we have a plethora more lightweights on property than ever in EAG's history and there's a reason why and that'll be another video coming uh, here very very soon so do subscribe for more hit that like button and uh, let's go have some fun with this M3 GT Speaking of driving homologation cars, you are not going to want to miss the next video coming up. This is a very new arrival, EAG First Look. It is a Sport Evolution, one of 600 built, just 21,000 kilometers on this brilliant rot on cloth. Uh, one of the lowest mileage, uh, at least lowest uh, that we've ever seen or come across. Uh, this is going to be a fun one to bring to you and certainly uh, looking forward to these four cylinders of fury that Frankly, you uh, would never have happened if there wasn't an S38. A good old Paul Roche that uh, designed uh, the, the camshafts for the 507 all the way to the uh, M88, the M1 engine. Uh, that is now under uh, the hood of all seven of these S38 powered M5s and M6s. This is S38 Alley. Uh, there will be an eighth one here coming soon. That's another video you're not going to want to miss. Uh, good old Paul Zuckerman has traded in his 40,000 mile black E28 M5 that he sourced from us uh, a couple years ago. He's been playing uh, with a lot of pretty heavy duty hardware, uh, which uh, there's only about a baker's dozen E28 M5s that have under 50, 50,000 miles. And here are four of them. Uh, this is a one owner with just 9,000 miles. I can comfortably say this is the lowest mileage in North America. Frankly, it's the lowest mileage U28 M5 that's in stock form uh, in this hemisphere. Uh, this is a 30,000 mile EAG repeat visitor and a 43,000 mile EAG repeat visitor that has uh, not yet hit the market. Uh, certainly excited to uh, bring some E28 M5 love your way coming soon. The M6 is, of course, uh, uh, another one owner M6 in brilliant or Zinnabarat and a uh, black uh, 9,000 mile car. A lot of low mileage stuff in EAG Super Secret Warehouse today. We glazed right over the one owner 
3,000 mile carbon M5 and the one owner 1,000 mile Z3M coupe. But today our, our feature uh, subject uh, of E36 in nature is of course the M3 GT. We're going to briefly talk about some of the GT specific stuff here while we're stationary before hitting the road. Uh, it was built to homologate in Europe for uh, the GT series in the FIA as well as the IMSA series here in the United States. And this is what it looked like. Uh, this is a very similar spec to what BMW North America ran. It's the full PTG wide body kit. And this was a, well, uh, certainly an enjoyable car for the most recent and really the only owner because it's still on its original MSO. Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, battle scars here and there that uh, we're going to be taking care of. Thankfully, it did come with another set of wheels so we can uh, get it all sorted out. And looking forward to, to taking you for a ride in this thing next year. Uh, it will be a car that uh, we're going to go out and track and have fun and drive because that's what you do with uh, these cars. The best part about them is driving them. And, and this is uh, certainly uh, what the winning combination was for the, the E36 platform because they did win quite a few races, quite a few series, uh, championships even. And it was all because of the homologation for the GT. T. So like the lightweight, or I should say uh, the lightweight's like the GT, it does have the adjustable front splitter. You'll notice the checkered flag insignias on the sides. Uh, they will have the for, uh, forged lightweight uh, wheels. It is a staggered setup as well as the adjustable rear spoiler without the riser blocks installed on the GTs. You could, uh, as an option, get it without the uh, badge, the insignia delete. They all came with the clear lenses, which was a pretty cool and fun, popular thing to do. I think Evan and I did that on our first E36s, was the clear Euro lenses. Well, that was standard issue on the GT. Love the floating front rotors, which again, another European only bit of kit. And uh, here under the hood, or the, the fire breathing S50B30. It is a 295 horsepower variant of that three liter. It does have a slightly different set of software, does 264 degree cams. You'll notice the front motorsport strut tower brace that again uh, was borrowed for the lightweight program. And it's a really great free revving, high RPM, six throttle body. It's just, uh, you know, it's the predecessor to the S54, which is arguably one of the best, if not the best naturally aspirated six cylinder engine BMW's ever built. But uh, those engines would not have happened had uh, this not happened. And that red one will soon look like this uh, white one because that is the color of the paint underneath this frozen red wrap. And that car is heading up to EAG uh, momentarily, literally. Yeah. It's uh, certainly a, a super ex <laughs> nice example that uh, will be unwrapped here very soon and is going to be something you're certainly going to want to stay tuned for and check out the video on that car. Uh, when it does uh, uh, post. That car is not yet on the market, but if you're interested in M1, you want to jump the line. Another uh, EAG first look here on an exceptionally nice, I mean, check the condition of this thing. It is quite, quite nice. Again, another member of the San Francisco collection. Uh, so uh, the GT will have the Mexico green interior. It will be paired with the Alcantara. You could get rear headrest. That was an option. That rear sun blind was also an option. Uh, another option were the uh, venting power rear windows. Check this out. It hasn't been opened in a while. You can hear it. Uh, the power seats, which this car does not have, was an option. And like the lightweights, they all have the carbon fiber interior trim on the uh, ashtrays, which uh, this is back in the day when they still came with ashtrays. The lightweight uh, dash plaque. Uh, air conditioning, which was an option. Uh, the alarm system was an option. The three-spoke steering wheel uh, was an option. And uh, this car has pretty much most of those options. And again, the, uh, the, the Motorsport Insignia uh, entry sill. So uh, I think that's a pretty good quick lap. I, I suppose I should take just one brief moment and congratulate Mr. Ryan out in California. He is going to be the next custodian of the EAG OG repeat visitor, the Diamond Schwartz on Cardinal 88 M3. This is the very first car we ever bought back. This is the car that basically uh, coined our uh, buyback program. And I'm, you know, it's uh, only fitting that it's the most, uh, uh, I guess, well rejuvenated and traveled EAG repeat visitor having now sold it 13 times. This is the 13th time we've sold this car. 
it has to be the nicest condition 100,000 mile uh, E30 M3 that uh, the market will see. And, and relatively uh, to, you know, to the price point, I mean, this is a lot of car for the money. The value on this thing is off the charts. I'm very, very excited to, to get this out to California and uh, hear his feedback firsthand. That the car has basically served a bit as a gateway drug uh, to many enthusiasts to, to, hey, let's see if I'm a vintage BMW uh, owner and buyer and enthusiast. And uh, if I love it, uh, then maybe I might upgrade the stable, which that's basically uh, what we've used this car as, as is um, just basically uh, that, uh, to get people uh, signed up for the brand and signed up for EAG, signed up for the, the vintage Analog M. And, uh, you know, these are the best all-star BMW Analog Ms that the company's frankly built. And these are the cars that really get us very, very excited and, and uh, very, very excited to go jump behind the steering wheel of this GT and share that with you firsthand right now. Driving the M3 GT is quite a joy. It is a bit lighter weight than the standard E36 M3 from North America, and of course with an additional 45 uh, horsepower, uh, 55 horsepower actually, uh, the difference is definitely noticeable. Uh, it's got a little bit different springs, a little bit different heavier shocks. It does have the dual pickup oil pan that you'll find on the lightweight with the uh, two uh, oil pumps, of course, or the duo uh, centric oil pump, I think they call it. Uh, it will also have a slightly different uh, uh, software for the Vanos, and it's running the 264 degree cams. Uh, 295 horsepower is definitely no poke, and when you take a little bit of the weight off, uh, it definitely, definitely makes a difference. Um, it's a really fun car that I would like to have some more of uh, in our lives. And uh, now that they're eligible to import into the States, I, I certainly hope that we're able to accomplish that here soon. and brakes and it's just no wonder the E36 chassis has been an enthusiast uh, favorite for so very many years and that kind of actually takes me back my uh, very first 3 series was of course the E36 uh, Evan and I actually had matching 325 ISs actually believe it or not and uh, they were done up a little bit to look like M3s but that was the cool thing to do back then and uh, well that was the most that we could afford. These cars are very very special to so many people and, and I can tell you two people specifically that these cars have meant a lot to over the years are these two young guys. Uh, this is Evan and I circa late 90s. Uh, this is in our parents' driveway with a pair of 95 uh, and a 93 325 IS. Um, uh, neither of our M3, but uh, looking at them outside of the mirrors, you'd think they're M3s given all the upgrades that we put on them with the clear lenses and the lightweight wheels and, and uh, suspensions and, and all the cool stuff that a lot of other enthusiasts did back then when uh, we were just kind of coming up. And, and uh, now since then, we've had M3s, M5s, new ones, uh, all kinds of other uh, M cars since then. And I think for a lot of people that the, the relationship started with the E36. My first M3 was almost 20 years ago and I bought it out of Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. It was a Tynan Stage 3 supercharged of all things and had very low to 17,000 miles on it. And I remember that trip up there vividly to go and qualify the car and 
course, uh, make sure it was everything that I had hoped it was, because it was a very expensive car for me, especially at that age. And uh, that was a very fun, but also very educational ownership experience, and had some technical challenges, which was uh, good for me to experience at that point in my car career, uh, knowing that I couldn't fix everything myself at that point. And, and that was uh, eye-opening, because I traditionally done that and, and so having to go out into the uh, open big world of uh, the retail uh, environment of, of shop owners and then uh, learn all about that was um, it was a learning experience certainly and I'm glad that we did for the fact that we run our service department and, and uh, now rejuve program uh, very differently because of the experiences I had as a, as a consumer and I'm very thankful that that car did give me some uh, some challenges and you know I got what I paid for I didn't pay as much as I probably should have at that time I thought it was a great deal uh, I didn't uh, do too bad on the car but I, I certainly didn't do what I thought I was going to I was paying for college at the time and uh, uh, well um, driving an M3 GT today I didn't even know what an M3 GT was back then when I bought that car actually uh, I don't even know if I knew what a lightweight was uh, to be frank um, and um, you know they weren't terribly old cars at that point but uh, to be driving a GT now 20 years later uh, it's a pretty great experience I'm uh, very very uh, fortunate and blessed to, to have uh, these great cars in our life and, and I'm very uh, excited to be able to share them with you so I hope you're enjoying the drive as much as I am because this car is a lot of fun GT stands for great times that's what GT stands for with this car I think yeah we'll go with that <laughs> the E36 M3 is just a really balanced car to drive that frankly is very communicative and will certainly give you a lot of feedback which is great for a early uh, driver a beginning driver I am super ha super happy that I began my track days with an E36 platform and it's a really good platform to learn, so if you do have any younger uh, enthusiasts that would like to pick up the hobby, especially uh, on track, an E36 is a great place to start them. Uh, maybe a 96 or later with traction control would probably be a good idea, though. definitely stands for great times. some corners like that is a very rewarding exercise. Thanks for tuning in to the M3 GT. Stay tuned for more of the E28 M5s, the M6s, the Sport Evos, all kinds of fun stuff coming up. I appreciate everybody subscribing and liking the videos and uh, well, see ya.